We're going to begin a session on architecture in FileMaker Pro. Now this session will be continued with Ray Rubenstein tomorrow first thing in the morning and will be um, added to in the course of everything we do because understand that architecture is, is, is a big picture and this is not uh, an exhaustive discussion on architecture. This is kind of an overview to understand what architecture is in terms of the community really. Bless you. So first of all, what is database architecture? I'm going to give you a real simple definition. Uh, that I received from Ray. It's the organization and structure of information that supports required business functionality. Pretty simple, right? Data being one form of information. And it's all about supporting business functionality. Another simple way of looking at it is <clears throat> database architecture changes in order to support the business need. So if you have a particular architecture and you have a new business need, then that architecture changes to support it. Pretty straightforward. So architecture includes a number of subcategories and roles, and I believe we have eight here. So architecture includes education, and the role that goes with that is being a teacher, incorporating best practices in everything you do that you do in your development policy. It also provides pr providing a solution, and in that sense, the role you would take in providing a solution and architecting a data infrastructure is that of a civil engineer, metaphorically. You're building an infrastructure for the business model. Another category is functionality. In that sense, you're actually a salesman promoting the capability, actually saying, I'm selling you this architecture because we all have to wear multiple hats in, in this world of software. We're, when we're actually trying to promote the functionality of how we're going to architect something, we're selling it to the business client, whether that be in-house or your real customer, as this architect in this way will be able to satisfy the following objectives. Architecture also includes governance, in which sense you are acting as a policeman, establishing and enforcing, well, even more than that, legislature and policemen. So you're establishing policies, procedures, protocols, rules that are going to be in place for the software system, establishing standards and then enforcing them. Or sometimes just enforcing standards that somebody else has put together, like compliance issues we'll get to. It also involves decision making, in that sense you're a mayor or a governor or a king, and that you have to uh, promote technology acquisition, which means the technology you're architecting has to be acquired, which means decisions have to be made to put it in place so that it will do what you need to have it do. And then working with the data itself, interpreting, that actually should say interpreting the data, it's like playing the role of a linguist where you have to interpret the data to get useful results. Ray will talk about that a lot tomorrow with business intelligence. Data is great. I always look at when I'm building the system, I want to know first what the input is, what we're dealing with. Second of all, what do we have to do with it? What's the output? What's the reporting? And then we figure out what's going on in the middle, right? So the, the backside, the reporting, the end product, that's the linguist role where you're trying to understand what do I have and what can I do with it? How can I mine it and manipulate it to get all the possible reporting? And even predictive technologies <coughs> reporting we haven't anticipated so you can plan for the future in ways that the data might be used 10 years from now that exists today that we don't know what to do with, and problems that might arise before the system starts actually being built. You're also playing the role of a plumber, metaphorically, dealing with infrastructure, these might be flipped, where you have to communicate with people who are in the IT department as far as network infrastructure, communicating the information. That also includes like dealing with the users and the user interface and making sure that all the different roles and accounts that are going to be used in the system are taken into account, where you're actually doing the plumbing and the connecting of all the different users and the data itself and the even even as much as the equipment. And that can apply even making sure that you have the right equipment to support it. And I believe finally, security, kind of the last but not least, right? Architecture includes planning for the security of the system. Not only to guard it, to protect the information, but to actually control and take into account the allowing access to the data. So security can be broken down into two very, very simple things. Protecting it so it doesn't get damaged or stolen, and then addressing issues of who can access it at what levels. And all of this from a category
category and role perspective is at a very high level what architecture is. Is that clear? Any questions on that? It, architecture also be, can be defined as the structure or structures of the system which comprise certain things, software components, the externally visible properties of those components, such as the user interface. We'll get into components in just a little bit. So the externally visible properties of the components in a system would be things like the APIs, user interface, um, a metadata dictionary, which could be held in XML or some other things, some place where data is held, information about the data. I use XML as an example because we all know that that's a, that's a tag editing language where you have data encapsulated in tags that are metadata about that. So there's a variety of ways that that could be stored and held. XML is one way of expressing it. It's a tool used for it. But it's, a, it's one that we commonly get our head around. Any comments on that? Any insights? Lee? Okay. So one of the structures that comprise architecture is also going to be the relationships between the components. This is all from Wikipedia. And going a little further, some of the structure structures of the system, there's integration between the components of a the system. There's, there's, there's two major categories of integration. There's physical integration and semantic integration. So physical integration means when you have different types of data, it's going to be held properly in the proper tables and fields. That's when we start talking about data normalization. So I'm kind of leading into Michael Frankel's talk about normalization. So physical integration is everything's held in the right places, and therefore it can talk to, its, to, to each other properly. But semantic integration means that all the data in a particular locale, in a particular field, a particular table, all has the same significance. It all means the same thing. So physical is where it goes, but semantic means that, that where it is really has appropriate meaning. And that's part, a big part of database architecture, is planning in such a way that it's going to be held in the right place and held the right meaning. We've got extra animation on the slides. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Software architecture is also the plan for fulfilling, it's for fulfilling non-functional requirements. Laramie was speaking on, is it Thursday? Functional Thursday. and non-functional? Yeah. So on a real high level, Laramie, take a moment and define for us the difference between functional and non-functional requirements. Um, Speak up a little bit. Non-functional non requirements would be Anything that the user might not see happening with the system, um, but that achieves what the user wants the system to do, um, which would be things like your your scripts, your scripted triggers, your calculations. Um, those would be your non-functional requirements, and your functional requirements are what the user wants the system to do for them. Um, they want it to, uh, you know, track a customer, or they want to track their vendors, or they want, you know, it's like that's the functional requirement, and the non-functional is how that's achieved. David, you agree with that? Um, I think by and large. Okay. I like them, you know, red. So, uh, so architecture is about